Mark D'Antonio out at Michigan State, apparently by his own accord. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, responding to the news that just came out of East Lansing, just posted to all the various major sports websites within the last few minutes. I was just on talking USC football, so please check out that video. We did a live stream just a few minutes ago, and word came out, so I thought I would turn it around immediately to talk to you. If you have any um, thoughts about the Michigan State situation, is this a surprise? Is this a shock? No. The Michigan State football program has been in decline, and even more so than that, there's been controversy swirling around uh, the football program, but more specifically, the entire athletic department for a number of years, um, not involving on the field conduct, but uh, what has swirled around the program, a number of controversies in the way that the athletic department has been administered. So that is certainly, um, I believe, weighed in on this decision by Mark Antonio, and whether this was forced to a certain extent or there was pressure there. We will dive into that. I'll take your phone calls at 860-325-3687. I know that people are going to be asking me within minutes who should be the next coach at Michigan State. No, no one necessarily comes to mind right off the top of my head, but as we continue the discussion, I'm sure I will come up with some names. I don't know contract status off the top of my head of coaches across the country, but we will dive into it together. So we will make it to the live chat, but for the meantime, the phone lines are open as well at 860-325-3687. So let's get the word directly from the newswire, specifically ESPN.com. So Michigan State coach Mark D'Antonio announced he is stepping down. D'Antonio said this in a statement. After much reflection and discussion with my family, I feel that it is now time for a change as we enter into a new decade of Michigan State football. That's all we got. A two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, D'Antonio has been at Michigan State since 2007. Is the program's winningest coach with 114 victories. <coughs> Excuse me. Since taking over the Spartans, D'Antonio has won three conference titles and four division titles while guiding the program through one of the most successful eras. Michigan State went to a bowl game in uh, 12 of D'Antonio's 13 years in East Lansing. He had six 10-win seasons and six bowl wins. We know all this. Prior to his arrival, Michigan State had just two 10-win seasons and seven bowl victories overall. Okay, in November, the 63-year-old coach said he intended to stay head coach following a 44-10 loss to rifle Michigan. That was the team's fifth straight loss overall. The Spartans rebounded to win their final two games and went on to win the new era pinstripe bowl. D'Antonio received a one-time $4.3 million retention bonus on January 15th. It'll be interesting uh, to learn of what's going to happen to that retention bonus since it was just paid out three weeks ago at $4.3 million. Scandal, however, as I alluded to just a minute ago, has arrived and marred the past few seasons. Lawyers for former recruiting director Curtis Blackwell alleged that Dan Anto D'Antonio committed multiple NCAA violations. Blackwell is suing Dan D'Antonio and others at Michigan State claiming wrongful termination. He says he was made into a scapegoat as the football program and the university responded to a series of sexual assault allegations in the early months of 2017. University police arrested Blackwell on suspicion of obstruction as part of a sexual misconduct investigation involving three former Michigan State football players in January of 2017. He was not charged with a crime. He was suspended indefinitely in February of 2017, and four months later, his year-to-year -year contract was not renewed. So when D'Antonio was asked about Blackwell in the summer of 2017, uh, D'Antonio said Blackwell's contract was not renewed due to philosophical differences. That's always a neat phrase to put on a situation like this. Blackwell believes he was let go 
so that the football program and university could blame him for a recruiting class that featured four players who were all convicted of crimes related to sexual incidents within their first year on campus. Blackwell says it was D'Antonio's decision, not his, to bring the most controversial of those players to East Lansing. <coughs> So the football program has not been doing well since reaching the college football playoff in 2015, winning a big 10 championship uh, with a 12 and two record in that season, Michigan state then went three and nine, then rebounded to a 10 and three season now seven and six, the past two years. So the, the, the football program has leveled off and declined to a certain extent the past four seasons. And then you have these issues involved. So it's a situation in which has pointed toward D'Antonio stepping down. I'm a bit surprised that it came at this point and did not come earlier. That uh, certainly the last time Michigan State was on the football field was the last few days of December last year, 2019. So there's been plenty of time for this to be determined. So I don't know if something's been learned. And... Something has led D'Antonio to survey the situation and what might be coming down the pipe headed his way and the university and the football program's way that has made his determination much clearer to what he needs to do and where he needs to leave over the past few weeks. Because otherwise you would think that from a football situation, from a football standpoint, that he would have known what his direction would be following the conclusion of the season, the last few days of December. But the, this leads me to believe that it's taken him another five to six weeks to determine uh, that he needs to step down, that there might be some serious, serious issues coming Michigan State's way. 860-325-3687. We'll talk about the Michigan State job and uh, Mark D'Antonio's tenure. We will take this in a number of directions, and certainly we've got a call coming in here. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Yeah, who's on the line? Navy Thomas 8, buddy. Hey, Tom, how are you? I am, I am shocked. What you just reported, I hadn't even seen that on Twitter or <laughs> Facebook, nothing. I didn't report it. It's and, out there. And you break out on, on uh, YouTube, I'm just like, head slap. What the hell is going on here? Well, we can't be surprised, Tom. <clears throat> I just don't remember any dirt like Penn State went on or you, you know you, the, the the teams and um, there's just been so much been going on before and then this one is just out of the left field it just shocked me to hear that from you so based on what we just read and understand of the misconduct and the allegations and the controversy that has swirled around not just the football program, but has been connected to the athletic department in the last few years. I'm not necessarily shocked and Michigan state not playing well on the football field the past four seasons. And so his tenure there is leveled off and started to decline. Uh, that combined a situation has not made this a surprise for me. What has taken me off guard is that I thought based on them playing better at the end of the season, winning a bowl game, and maybe some of these dark clouds off the football field having dissipated and separated itself, that maybe he had weathered the storm. And usually a coach is stepping down right at the end of the season. So this is five weeks later, six weeks later. I, I got to believe that there is something known that's coming their way in regards to a confirmation of a lot of these issues and allegations that he is going to steer clear of and get out of the way. And Michigan State's going to have to start over with somebody else. 
I, I did get a report on my phone from CBS Sports, and I read the entire thing before I watched you, and CBS Sports does not say any accusation as to what has caused this entire thing. So, and no big deal. I just glad to see you're 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 in the top two reporting this stuff, man. Well, well, again, I I I cannot take any credit for that. Uh, I was doing a USC live stream a few minutes ago, and uh, people were starting to jump on live on the live chat to let us know what was happening. So then I just went and verified it. I'm not here to report the news, Tom. That's that's not my job. Uh, uh, there's no way I can stay ahead of the major news agencies. My my here my my job is to uh, to analyze what's going to happen next. If if you didn't have reported it after I got it from CBS Sports, I would have sent it to you via Oh, I know you would. I know you would have. I can count on you. Like this, I I fire it over to you and say, "This might be a good to uh, <laughs> uh Mark Rogers TV deal." That's right. Well, this one's too big to pass up. Uh cuz this guy has resurrected right, this friend, program. Just, He's been a great I coach. Just wanted to you for uh, jumping on right off the bat and uh we'll talk to you later all right tom we appreciate it good to hear from you all right my friend bye so strictly talking about football mark antonio did an amazing job at michigan state and i know it's leveled off the last four seasons but consider where michigan state was in 2007 when he took over if you look at michigan state football from the 70s through the 80s up until the time that he took over in 2007 you look at mediocrity seven and five six and six repeated over and over and over maybe a quick spike here and there winning a rose bowl in 1988 uh getting to a citrus bowl finishing in the top 10 uh in 1999 uh nick saban couldn't even win big at this program mark d'antonio took over and they took over the state of Michigan, and he took top 35 and 40 recruiting classes and took them to Big Ten championships. The, the guy's a remarkable coach. If we're just talking football, football. Uh, time at Cincinnati, time at Ohio State under Jim Tressel. Then he parlays that into the Michigan State job, and uh, what a job he did. Again, this team was finishing in the top 5 to 10 in the nation from 2010 is when they really hit it big with an 11 and 1 season through 2015. So for 6 years Michigan State was just about as good as it gets in college football. But again, he's not been able to maintain that. And so that coupled with all these allegations and they're beyond allegations and rumors, there is substance here to what's going on in the athletic department has led to his downfall. Let's see what we've got in the live chat. And uh, I will remind everyone that uh, our phone lines are open at 860-325-3687. And, and, and excuse the voice, pardon the voice. I'm struggling through, so uh, I apologize for that. And it's good to know that uh, people approve Cheryl in particular of my shirt. Uh, good choice of shirts. Uh, I got this uh, around Christmas time. Jay Jobs, like the video. Thank you so much for encouraging and uh, reminding people to like the video. That is key. We've got uh, some Ohio State fans on here, of course. Uh, Jay Jobs, a big SEC guy. I don't know who Jay Jobs roots for, though. I know that you're an SEC guy. So I just thought uh, this similar to the news that we heard about Willie Taggart a few months ago at Florida State. I jumped online immediately after I got word that Willie Taggart had been fired and we had a big live stream and uh, calls all over the place for hours 
So I just wanted to make sure that I was giving everybody an opportunity out there to um, to say your piece on Mark Antonio's tenure at Michigan State, the current situation with the football program, both on the field and off the field, and then also who could possibly replace him at Michigan State. I am just going to go off the top of my head. The first, very first name that comes to mind, which is typically not the guy that gets the job, but what about Luke Fickle at Cincinnati? And what a remarkable job that he's done there in turning a three or four win program into a double digit winner the past two years. And uh, of course, ties uh, in serving on the same coaching staff and, and being around the program following his playing career and moving into the coaching ranks at Ohio State and his connection with Mark Van D'Antonio, I would not be surprised if Luke Fickle was under consideration for the job. Uh, a lot of the other people that come to mind would necessarily, um, you know, Matt Campbell at Iowa State, but I don't know that he wants to deal with what's going on at Michigan State and make what has become almost a parallel move from Iowa State to Michigan State. If this was five years ago, yes, in a heartbeat, you jump from Iowa State to Michigan State. But right now, I don't know that Matt Campbell would want to mess with Michigan State and some of the issues that the incoming coach is going to have to deal with potentially. If the timing of this decision by Mark Antonio tells us anything, it's that there are some serious issues that we already know about, but coming to fruition and have to going to be that will have to be dealt with by the next head coach. So Michigan State may not be in a favorable position in going out to get its next head coach. It may not be the type of individual that they would deem worthy of a Michigan State type job, typically, but considering the circumstances, they may have to go a, a rung lower or two to, to uh, secure their next head coach. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, James Franklin is not going to leave Penn State go to, to go to Michigan State under these circumstances and not even under ideal circumstances. There's no reason to do that. Uh, James Franklin is bringing in top eight to 10 recruiting classes at Penn State. Does anybody else have any other names for me? Uh, because again, Luke Fickle came to mind immediately. Uh, I'm trying to survey the Mac. Uh, that that seems to be a jump to a Michigan State or a Midwestern power. Look at who's doing well in the Mac right now. Um, and of course, you've got a number of offensive and defensive coordinators at high level schools that will want to 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 be considered for that job, and that Michigan State would be uh, happy to get. Uh, again, this news just came out down a few minutes ago. I don't necessarily have uh, guys off the top of my head other than Luke Fickle. Uh, you know, some of the guys that we would have thought of uh, months ago have been plucked up like a Mike Norvell going from Memphis to Florida State. Uh, I'll remind everyone that if you want to talk Mark D'Antonio's tenure at Michigan State, the current situation and football environment uh, there with Sparty and who could possibly replace Mark D'Antonio, I'll take some calls at 860-325-3687. We've got 59 on the line and appreciate uh, your support. Please like the video. Iron Cross, did you tell me this? I guess you did. I can't keep track of what everybody tells me and uh, the, the crazy predictions you guys have. Again, I came on the line and immediately said, I'm not surprised. I thought this was going to happen. I would have said in December, I would have said there is a 75 to 80% certainty. And I think I did answer somebody's question at one point to, to say that there is a 75% chance that Mark D'Antonio will not be the head coach at Michigan State in 2020. But after they won the bowl game and finished strong and there was separation between the end of the season and now 
I thought, okay, he's weathered the storm. He's going to stick through it. Uh, they're on a slight uptick. But he also knows that his his roster is probably in the worst condition that it's been in since like 2007 or 8, since he started there. <laughs> this team should have won much bigger the last two seasons than they did. They had one of the top defenses in the country, and they brought almost all those guys back the last two seasons. They had a sophomore-oriented team in 2017 that went 10-3. and three. And after he was able to weather the 3-9 and nine in 2016, he had a very young team that won 10 games in 2017, and it looked like Michigan State was going to be back at it, back near the elite of the Big Ten the last two seasons because they've brought back their talent. They've brought back the wide receivers. They brought back Brian Lewerke at quarterback. They brought back their defense. That was one of the five or ten best in the nation uh, the two previous seasons. But they did have more injuries than the typical team, but they just didn't play well. And him going through this complete coordinator coaching staff shuffle that he went through this past season and basically took guys out of specific uh, roles and threw them in other roles that didn't make sense seemed like a desperate move uh, following a disappointing 2018 when they were supposed to contend for a Big Ten championship and brought back 21 of 22 starters and went seven and six. That uh, <coughs> it seems as though Mark Antonio lost some of his mojo for for whatever reason and didn't seem to be the uh, the figure uh, on the sideline that he had been and started to make some desperate moves um, in response. Okay, we've got uh, Glorious uh, LDR92 with another good selection. So in addition to my Luke Fickle selection, Pat Narduzzi obviously makes sense. Pat Narduzzi the defensive coordinator under D'Antonio in their heyday between 2010 and 2015 that, that formed those no-fly zone defenses uh, and then has moved on since to coach Pitt. So this might be a guy that understands the situation, knows that he's not a prime candidate to gain an upper echelon college football job, but can move up from a Pitt to a Michigan State Sorry if I'm offending any Pitt or ACC people to say that Michigan State's a better job than Pitt. If they don't have to face severe allegations, Michigan State is a better job than Pitt. Better resources, on-campus stadium. Uh, Pitt will never win big. I don't believe, I don't see it happening. Uh, playing at a pro NFL stadium, for one thing, that's, that's one issue they have. And playing in the shadow of Penn State. Uh, Michigan State was able to do that under D'Antonio and free themselves of Michigan and surpass Michigan. So it can be done. But that's that's a good selection right there. Pat Narduzzi obviously has ties to the program and uh, would be a good selection for both Michigan State and for Narduzzi if there's not serious issues headed their way. Jeff Fisher. That's, uh, I, I don't know where your angle is there. That would be an interesting case. Anybody who has spent their career in the NFL has to second guess going to college because of all the headaches you have to deal with in coaching college football. First of all, you go from having to handle a roster of 53 to a roster of 105 and chasing down and worrying about 105 kids who are, who are out there. Number one, you've got to keep them academically eligible, whether you do that uh, by the rules or you do that in an underhanded fashion. Number one, that is just a nightmare to keep track of 105 kids that are 18 to 21 years old to keep them academically eligible. And then also to keep them out of trouble. That's another nightmare that most NFL guys don't want to deal with. And Jeff Fisher has just been a coach, <coughs> excuse me, at that level 
uh, at least in the recent 20 years. Uh, so we, we've seen it, Herm Edwards do it most recently in going to Arizona State, and he's off to a good start there. So we've got um, we've got some odd names uh, also coming in with Lou Holtz coming out of retirement to coach Michigan State. Not going to happen. And yes, Luke Fickle, Jay Gruden, uh, most recently of the Washington Redskins. I don't know what the connection is there. Uh, Jay Gruden, Michigan State. But uh, that's an interesting thought as well. I'm sure we will start to get some names. Uh, Brent Venables, David Sanchez, throws out the Clemson defensive coordinator. That's a possibility. I love Navy Thomas. Always goes to to the nth degree to to bring out something that uh, is just an oddity that would be just so crazy. And that would be, of course, Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan and going to Michigan State. He's not going to do that. All right, folks, uh, I left the phone lines open for anybody who wanted to talk. 860-325-3687. Otherwise, I'm out. I'm done. I will provide my thoughts in a more consolidated fashion on Mark Antonio stepping down at Michigan State. I will give my perspective on his career, the Michigan State football program, where it stands, and what they could do going forward, and who would be the best candidates to go to East Lansing. Right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Florida State Live, followed by Virginia Tech Live at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And while I can still utter a sentence and talk, I will bid you farewell and please like the videos, share, comment, and subscribe if you love college football. Right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.